Hi everyone, uh, Jessica Parker here. I'm the owner of Dissertation by Design. And today I want to go into more depth about how to write a research problem statement. Earlier this year, I posted a more generic kind of high level overview of how to write a problem statement. Somehow the video has gotten like almost 2000 views so far and I'm not, I'm not sure why I don't understand YouTube's alg algorithm, but I have received quite a few emails asking for me to go more in depth. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, first, I think it's important to understand, you know, why is the research problem statement so important? For many doctoral students who are writing a dissertation or a thesis, the problem statement is often the first section of material in that introductory chapter that explicitly identifies the research problem that will be investigated. And this is a logical extension of your topic statement in your introduction. For qualitative researchers, it outlines a researchable phenomenon. For quantitative researchers, it clearly identifies your research variables. And as I mentioned in the earlier video, the high level overview, there are three components of the research problem statement. First, you have your context, then you have your knowledge gap, and then your significance. And the amount of information you relay in the problem statement is dependent upon the guidelines within your program. So what I mean by that is in my doctoral program, our problem statement was only about one to two paragraphs. I've seen other students and other programs where the problem statement is one sentence or it's several pages. Regardless of where you fall on that spectrum, I think one to two paragraphs is a great starting point because if you end up needing to shorten it, you can always move the bottom part of the problem statement, which is the significance, to another section of the introductory chapter and same with the context. So I don't think this exercise is futile if you only have to you know, identify the problem in one sentence or two pages. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a blank problem statement worksheet. Let's do that. And then I'll show you a completed one. Here we go. So these are the problem statement guiding questions. These are what I use when I'm helping a client conceptualize their research problem and clearly identify or narrow the problem that they are going to research. And the first component is the context. This is where you give the reader some information about what the current situation is, what's wrong or what needs to change about the current situation. A little bit of background, what are the most recent events that led us to the current situation? That's important context. And then context also includes the setting. I'll show you a completed one in a moment so you can see how I would answer some of these questions based on a research topic. Then you have the knowledge gap. I have a template here to help you write the knowledge gap statement. Uh, but in order to get there, it's important to tell the reader what have researchers in similar and other settings explored or discovered. And that second component, other settings, that's really only necessary if you are researching a problem that maybe hasn't been explored in the setting that you will be conducting your research in. So you have to draw some parallels to other settings. Otherwise, you can just focus on that first question. What have researchers in other settings explored or discovered? And what remains unknown about the problem? And once you have the information about what researchers in similar settings have explored or discovered, and what remains unknown, you can write this nice one sentence gap statement. While blank is known, blank is unknown. And for some students, if you're in a program where you only have to have a one sentence problem statement, that could be the problem statement. We call it, I call it the knowledge gap. And then we have the significance. In short, you know, why should the reader care? This is where the significance portion of the problem statement comes in. So why is it important to fill the knowledge gap? There are a couple ways you could go about speaking to the significance. You could talk about the scope. So how big is the problem or how many people are affected in the field or the specific context you're studying? 
or what are the consequences of not addressing the problem? This is another way you could speak to the significance. And finally, the contribution. How will your study contribute to the problem's solution? How does filling the gap help? So these are the guiding questions that I have my clients complete. This is the worksheet that we use when I'm trying to help them develop their problem statement. And I find that it's incredibly helpful um, so that they can get their thoughts in order. Let's look at a completed problem statement worksheet. One second. Here we go. So I completed this based on my own dissertation topic, which was oral healthcare curricular integration. And as you can see here in this example, I don't really have a lot of citations. And that's because I encourage you to just start with what you know, because it can be incredibly overwhelming to feel like as you're answering this question, you then have to dive into the literature. And sometimes you get distracted doing that. We can sometimes go down rabbit holes. So I always recommend to folks, just start with what you know. Don't worry about citations right now. This is for your eyes only. So answering the question, what is the current situation? As you, I'm not gonna read all of this to you because that's not what is important. I just wanna point out some things. This is only two sentences. It's very, to the point. It doesn't give me all the background information from the beginning of time, how we got here. It's just what is happening today, what is happening right now in one or two sentences. And then similar, similarly, what's wrong or what needs to change? And again, I only have two sentences here. I'm very specific and to the point. I'm also getting right to the point about who I'm studying, health professions, faculty, and what they're struggling with. And then what are the most recent events that led us to the current situation? A lot of people struggle with this. And I kind of giggle because I remember one of my first clients, I don't even remember what the topic was, but they sent me their introductory chapter. And it went all the way back to when men started, you know, humankind started walking on two feet. And I just had to laugh because I thought, sure, this could be relevant, but this is way too much information. So think about as far back as you need to go to set the stage for the current situation. Sometimes you can identify a seminal report that was released or maybe a very specific event within your field that led to the current situation. If you're not sure, sometimes you need to get ideas through reading other peer reviewed articles on your topic to see how far back they are going to help the reader understand the context. In this case, for my dissertation, I went back to the year 2000 because that's when the seminal groundbreaking report was released. So give that some thought. And then the setting, that's typically easy. It needs to be very specific. And then the knowledge gap. As you can see here, uh, there are citations in this section. It's important that you base your knowledge gap statement based on the literature. This should not be anecdotal. Uh, and so there are a number of citations in here and this section took me a little longer to develop. It took me some time to go into the literature and really figure out what have researchers in similar settings explored or discovered. So I have quite a few statements there to work with. I didn't find it necessary to bring in other settings, at least not at this point, so I left that blank. And then I have this nice little gap statement. While blank is known, blank is unknown. And then the significance. I talk about the scope, millions of Americans, large portion of the population. Uh, I talk about the consequences, and I have some bullet points here for the contribution. And these don't have citations. I did these based on what, what I already knew. And as an early draft, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're flexible and understanding that once you dive into the literature and you start writing your lit review, you have to be open to the fact that a lot of these statements might change. And then I have a color-coded problem statement here where the context is in yellow, the knowledge gap is in blue, and the significance is in light pink. 
And this is a two paragraph, oh, three paragraph problem statement, sorry. And it is in nice order. I have the context in the beginning. I have this nice transition sentence to the knowledge gap where I'm framing the knowledge gap. And I have my significance here in pink. So that is a draft of a three paragraph problem statement. Stop sharing here. I hope that you found this useful. And I really hope that what you take away from this is that you have to start somewhere, start with what you know, then go into the literature, be flexible and open to what might need to change within your problem statement, and go back and update it as you learn more and more about your topic. The guiding questions in this worksheet are meant to help you narrow your focus to a very specific context, knowledge gap, and significance based on the setting of your research, the participants of your research, and either a phenomenon for qualitative researchers or variables for quantitative researchers. Thank you for watching.